Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are talking through wardrobe clearouts, wardrobe organisation, wardrobe storage tips. I recently did the mother of all clearouts, like it's the biggest clearout I've ever done. Today I wanted to talk you through the experience of clearing out my wardrobe because it was quite the experience, the things I've learned, the process that we went through and how we've kind of put everything back in. Do let me know if you like this kind of video and also please subscribe if you are new. So step one of the wardrobe clear out is to take everything out your wardrobe. Mistake I've made in the past is in doing a wardrobe clear out in stages. So I do maybe the rail and then maybe some acrylic boxes and then maybe one shelf and a couple of drawers every so often. And I do it very gradually. And because of that, you don't get to see everything in your wardrobe. And the fact that you fit all of that in there it's shocking. I am a skilled human being. So once everything is out of the wardrobe, the first thing I did with a lot of encouragement from my friend Alex who was helping me was clean the wardrobe and hoover. Your wardrobe can get quite gross and dusty and especially for me, I have carpet in there. It is kind of an essential to hoover. Don't, don't do that, no. How old are you? So the next thing I did was split the clothing mountain that I created into a few different piles. And depending on what you're aiming for and what why you're clearing out and how you like to clear out, this will be from maybe three to, for me, it was six different piles. So I'm going to make a little list right now of all of my piles of clothing that I created and just eliminate the ones that aren't right for you. So firstly, you have your keep pile. And with these things, I don't really make a pile. I pop them straight back in the wardrobe and I'll talk a little bit about this as we go on. But I like to put things back in the wardrobe instead of just having like a random pile. I like to be able to kind of see what I'm thinking of keeping. And then the next pile I make is a 100% trash pile. Like disgusting rags of clothing that are maybe like coffee stained or just disgusting and falling apart that no one else is ever going to want. I'd like to note right now that that pile is never ever very big because I do donate as much as I can and I'm not talking about just fashion gross. I'm not being like that level of superficial. I'm talking like another human being should not wear this for hygiene reasons because it's just like stained and gross like that kind of reason in addition to those i created two more piles one was a giveaway pile just to be given to my local charities or to friends if they pop around and want to have a rifle through but then there's also a pile that i created for the more lovely pieces in my wardrobe that are still very current, still very recent, haven't really been worn, but are still incredibly gorgeous. And these pieces I'm actually going to be putting on a Depop account and slowly, because it's gonna take me a long time, going through it this year and uploading items onto my Depop account and auctioning them off. So all of the money, aside from the fee that Depop charges you, is going to be going to charity. And I'm gonna pick different charities and things like that. It's a work in progress because obviously I'm doing this in addition to everything else that I do, but this is a big passion project of mine this year. So I'm gonna be picking different charities. I'm gonna be asking you guys to pick charities that you're passionate about and together, hopefully we can raise a lot of money for those charities. So there is that pile that I created of lots of lovely, lovely, I can't speak, lovely things. And then the giveaway pile. And then I also created a pile of clothing that I'm keeping, but it's going in acrylic boxes and it's for seasonal pieces. So things that are maybe for much warmer weather than we're experiencing right now, or for much colder weather than we're experiencing right now. Hello. Hello, you can just see your little head. Say hi. You smell like what fits. There you go. So once you've mentally decided how many different piles of clothing you need, the next step is to start making those piles and get filling your wardrobe. So like I said, I like to put the keep items straight back in the wardrobe and I will pop things in and start like mapping out where things are going in the wardrobe. So evening dresses and things like that that I don't use as often as like knitwear or what else do I use really often? Mostly knitwear or coats. So the occasional coat that I keep in my wardrobe, they go right at the opening of my wardrobe because like right now, I can't get in my wardrobe because there are studio lights and suitcases in the way. So if I can only get it open this much, then I want to be able to reach for the things that I love and wear every day. So for me, it normally goes formal wear, skirts, never wear skirts, <laughs> smart shirts, normal shirts, knitwear, coats and if you're really smart by this point you may have preemptively purchased some new hangers and i've dabbled in a lot of hangers and i finally resigned myself to the fact that the best hangers are actually the ones that you can get from tk maxx tj maxx home sense that kind of store the ones that are basically 
almost a velour material, I can't remember what you call them. Uh, they come in lots of different colours and I didn't think they were the prettiest but actually they are the most practical because they're incredibly thin but they also are non-slip and for me I've had big white wooden hangers which looked so pretty and then I got thin copper hangers which do look so incredibly pretty and I'm using a mixture of those two at the moment but over the next couple of weeks I am actually going to be finally purchasing some new ones that are all thin and non-slip and that's actually going to allow me to pack way more into my wardrobe and like I said if you are smart you will preemptively do this because it will allow you to put so much more back in your wardrobe than chunky white hangers those things are the stupidest things I ever bought they might be really cheap in Ikea but don't do it people just don't do it I'm getting off on a bit of a tangent there but the point is start filling your wardrobe and mapping out what you're putting back in and as the hangers get more full and there are less and less of them you'll find yourself having to make really tough decisions because you'll obviously have more clothing than well if you're like me you'll have more clothing than the hangers that you have so you might end up swapping your favorite knitted jumper for one of the many sequin tops you have in your wardrobe for example i don't know why i picked sequin tops i don't even know mom so there's a good chance that you'll end up swapping pieces in and out and trading and for me it worked really well doing the clear out this way because i was left with the wardrobe full of things that I was so excited to wear and that I really loved and it makes getting dressed every day so much easier because I look in my wardrobe and I'm like yes and I can just reach for things and I'm so happy with the amount of stuff I have and it makes getting dressed in the morning a lot less of a struggle because I just feel really excited when I look at my wardrobe I don't look at it and think I have nothing to wear anymore and that's wonderful so evening pieces are back in the wardrobe these are the evening pieces that I'm keeping and then we've got some skirts here as well and then a couple of other things that are on the top of the pile that I'm definitely keeping. We've reached a huge dilemma. Tell us. I feel like people are going to judge me for this. Please don't judge me. I have two knee blend thread bomber jackets. Which one do I keep? They're beautiful but they're too similar. I have a dress in this print. I, so like, I like this one. I feel like I should one. keep this one. And blue is not my thing. It's not, so you don't wear a lot of blue. I feel like I should keep Yeah, I think this is beautiful. One. Okay. It goes should, with more things. Yeah, we should definitely auction this for charity. I think so. Because... That is beautiful. It is lovely. Oh, Bye, coat. Oh, I'll try it on. <laughs> <laughs> In doing this, you might also find that you have a really nice cohesive edit of clothing by the end of things as well. For me, I realised which brands I really love and it's actually helped me to really develop my personal style that little bit more by doing this because I could really see the mistakes that I was making and the brands I was shopping from that I wasn't getting the wear out of and then the pieces that I was keeping and the, the brands or shops that they were from that were doing really well for me. It also showed me the types of materials I liked and the colours and it's allowed me to see what I need more of and I can shop in a much better way. But there are a lot of brands that I realised that I shouldn't be buying from just because I don't ever get the wear out of their clothing. I buy pieces that I think are great and then I'm like... No. and it never gets worn and I really want to avoid that going forward. And through doing this you also realise the brands, materials, colours that you love the most and that you aren't getting the wear out of and that will really help you when it comes to making future purchases and you can make a much better edit of clothing that you wear every single day and you love for a very very long time by shopping this way and by learning from past experience. Now all of this can get really really tedious if you're not a big fan of organising and I'm one of those people that I will openly admit organizing does not excite me I am so incredibly jealous of a lot of the beauty girls in the community on YouTube around me that love organizing I would love to have them around for dinner to just come and organize my life and because of that I knew that I would never make it through a whole wardrobe room clear out without a little bit of help so I roped in my friend Alex like I mentioned earlier she came and helped me she is amazing at organizing she's very logical she likes a good system and I knew she would be the perfect human being to help me out with this mammoth task she also is a big optimist and all of those qualities put together kept her going even when the times got really tough so I roped her in with the promise of buying her a Nando's after we were done that seemed to do the trick but I did have to remember to keep her fed and water whilst we were doing this because if you don't do that things can start to look a little bit bleak and very intense especially if your wardrobe is the size that mine was so once all of my keep clothes were on hangers in the wardrobe I then took my seasonal piles which I was keeping in acrylic boxes and stored them at the bottom of the wardrobe as well and as for bag storage I have a smaller ish bag collection it's still it's still pretty big for the average human being but it's quite small on the scale of a bag collection 
So they all fit on a shelf in my wardrobe and I store them in their duster bags. And this just avoids the bags getting dusty and it avoids um, color transfer from bag to bag. I know I might get a few questions on shoes in this video and I personally don't keep my shoes in my wardrobe. There just isn't the space. I like to keep them in my hallway um, just because when I come through the door, I always take off my shoes. It's one of the first things that I do. So Josh and I have a kind of joint storage system in the hallway, which we are very rapidly overgrowing. So we need to rejig that. But for more special, pairs of shoes that I don't want to be kept in the hallway I keep them in their dust bags and in cardboard boxes underneath my bed and I definitely recommend doing something similar especially if you have pairs of shoes that you don't wear daily it's really nice to keep them neat and dust free if any of you do have amazing shoe storage recommendations or great shoe racks that are amazing for small very narrow hallways I would love to hear your suggestions and then we move on to drawer space and Josh and I share an Ikea unit which you probably see in the back of my videos quite a lot it's just a white set of drawers but the chest has eight drawers in total Josh has four I have four my top two are for gym gear and underwear now it used to be bikinis and socks and underwear pajamas and sleepwear and it just didn't really make sense and the whole drawers were so jumbled so Alex and I rejigged those feels weird that I'm telling you which drawer I keep my underwear in moving on the second drawer down is actually a thinner version of the drawer below it and it's one that is very sensitive to the weight of the clothes that you put in it so the bottom um, panel can start to bow so now I just keep light knitwear and light t-shirts and things like that vest tops and stuff like that in that drawer and I like to store the t-shirts in that drawer by rolling them because it just allows me to see what I've got in there so much easier because it's quite a big drawer and things can get a bit lost so I like to roll things it's meant to prevent creases as well but it just allows me to see everything I've got so much easier than it being piled on top of each other that kind of system makes no sense to me anymore and then the bottom drawer is now full of pyjamas, loungewear, jeans and then our bedding. For some reason I am lumbered with the storing of spare bedding and that makes no sense because I have more stuff. My loungewear and pyjamas are usually rolled, sometimes I just throw things in their folder because I just don't really care about pyjamas and then my jeans are stored upright so that I can see all of them. I don't really like to roll them, I think that's a bit pointless but I store them all upright, kind of like a filing cabinet and then I can see every single pair of jeans that I have, which colours, stuff like that and then behind that goes the bedding and I saw that upright as well because it makes everything so much easier to grab and again the reason jeans and bedding are in the bottom one is because they are the heaviest I just find that storing things from lightest things in the top of the drawer right down to jeans like heavy pairs of jeans works so much better in terms of preserving the furniture so once you're done storing all of your clothing the next thing you want to do is think about that giveaway pile and I know some people just choose to give it out to friends and family do whatever you want, I'm not telling you what to do. If you do decide to donate to charity, there are so many different charities. Um, you can take stuff to charity shops, but a lot of charities now are actually starting to do a pickup service, which I know for me, when I have like six bin bags of stuff and I can't fit that all in my car and my local charity shops don't have any parking anywhere near them it's so much easier to just ring them they will come and pick everything up and it's just a really great service that they do and they actually I think last time I did that I got a letter through that told me how much the items that I had donated sold for which was amazing it was really nice it's just a little load of stuff that I sent off and I got a letter back saying you have raised 162 pounds and I was like amazing that's so nice so it's really nice to do little things like that and it's just an easier way if you don't have a car or you don't live super close to a charity shop that is one way that you can easily donate your clothing to charity and as for my little charity project I'm going to be running this year I will hopefully have set up my account by the time this video goes live so I will link it in the info box and you can go follow me I think you can follow people on Depop if you're new to this so bear with me I don't normally sell my clothes so hopefully you can go follow me on there and do let me know in the comments if there are any charities that are very close to your heart make sure you follow me on twitter because i will talk about charities and do polls on charity different charities and stuff like that um as the months go on i'm hoping that by the end of this month i can do at least my first five items on Depop. So hopefully we can raise a little bit of money together that way. I will leave some previous videos up here and a subscribe button here if you haven't subscribed already. I would love to have you back for more videos. I hope you're all having the best day and I will see you guys again very soon. I'm going on holiday this weekend so I'm not entirely sure when my next video will be up. Thank you so much for watching, bye.